Hey everyone, welcome to Strong Mind, Strong Body. Today we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is how do we reduce stress and anxiety? And I feel like I've had a lot of people on the podcast to talk about different techniques to reduce stress and anxiety. But one of the things that we have yet to cover is something that I'm quite fascinated by, and it's called tapping, otherwise known as the emotional freedom technique. So I'm Angie Miller. This is Strong Mind, Strong Body. And today we're going to deep dive into the emotional freedom technique, aka tapping, which is really an alternative treatment modality that helps reduce stress and anxiety, diminish cravings, and resolve a wide range of other concerns. So tapping is evidence-based and it's kind of a bridge of acupuncture and psychology and really Tapping can be quite simple to apply personally, but also to teach your clients some simple tapping methods. I know I have an app that goes through different tapping methods that you can try to reduce different concerns that you might have. So I brought in a guest today. Her name is Casey Stevens. She's a licensed psychotherapist. She's also a certified clinical hypnotherapist and a consciousness coach. So Casey is not going to hypnotize us today, but she is going to teach us about tapping. So Casey, I'm going to bring you in and have you introduce yourself. Wonderful. Good to see you, Angie. Um, thanks for having me. You bet. Your lighting is absolutely superb. You are on the West Coast, right, Casey? I'm in Seattle, Washington. Yes. All right. So um, Casey, tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. So um, as you mentioned, I um, ha am, have studied psychology and I'm a, a, a clinical therapist um, as well as um, doing a lot of holistic. I just have a passion also for practicing psychology from a holistic perspective. And so when I was doing my training years ago, I was really intentional and uh, deliberate wanting to also study some Eastern um, medicine practices, some holistic ways of healing and um, integrating the mind, body, spirit in a way that was you know, organic and holistic um, and, you know, didn't require a lot of diagnoses or medications or all of those things that I think that we can access naturally. Uh, I like that. So kind of to move away from traditional methods, that top down approach of only talk therapy and that involves diagnosis and that type of thing. I love that you're thinking outside of the box. And to your point, you were very intentional because when I looked at your certifications and trainings, you really do have quite a um, um, a lineup of kind of integrative methods to tap into a person's body psychology, as well as their emotional psychology. And I think that's such an important, um, an important thing in today's world, because we all want to link that mind body. So before we even start, can you give us a brief history of tapping just to kind of give it some, some, you know, evidence based information, if you will, to say, hey, it's real, it's, it's supported. Yeah, well, it is based in traditional Chinese medicine where um, they have what are called meridians that are energy centers that run through the entire body and connect everything, um, connect our brain to our organs. All of our organs are known in Chinese medicine to hold uh, different emotions. Um, and so it's really uh, what they found in tapping is these meridian points, these specific sequence of points um, we can access and connect uh, by up, uplifting, uprooting uh, whatever those deeper emotions are and, um, you know, bring them to a more elevated state so that we can, um, you know, kind of somatically, if you uh, understand kind of the psychology of trauma and somatics, how important it is to not just uh, understand the psychology and do talk therapy in those ways, but also to integrate the physical body um, as that's where we store all of that data inside our bodies. Our bodies are wise. So definitely. And to your point, you know, we, those energy centers are kind of our seat of our emotions, not, not just the physical aspect of it. And so I had a gentleman on my podcast who talked about uh, psychedelics, same mm -hmm. thing, how a top-down approach doesn't always work because we can't always access language when we're trying to come up with uh, what's actually going on in our emotional being. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about tapping, I know there's this big link between energy and tapping. And I know tapping is said to be able to improve our physical and our personal psychology. Um, when you got into tapping, 
Um, or I guess I should say, how do you apply to tapping with your clients? How would you know that I would be a good fit for tapping? Yeah, I mean, if somebody was just interested and they came in, we could certainly go through a sequence. The beautiful thing um, is, is that anyone can access this information for free and you can do it on your own. What I always like to do, um, I don't know about you, Angie, but I like to empower my my clients so that they can have the resources to do these things on their own. It's not just when you're in session, but it's also anytime you you know what you can do, you have it at your fingertips, you know, no pun intended. Um, but it, uh, I would say that if I notice that a client if I'm in session with somebody and I notice that they are dysregulated and really their nervous system is not coming, you know, on online in a, in a good way, then a really great way to physically shift the energy inside their body, um, inside their mind, inside their experience is to go through a tapping sequence. There's lots of other modalities as well, but this is a really quick, easy, efficient, effective one. So. Yeah, because to your point, tapping does help kind of regulate the nervous system. It helps calm us down and make us feel more in control. And I do like that tapping is something that I can take with me everywhere I go. I have an app that, mm -hmm. that shows you tapping tools for different conditions. Like if you're feeling anxious, this is where and how you tap. And it is so accessible. It's like breathing. Breath goes with us everywhere we go. It's something we can apply daily in the moment. So Casey, what I'm hoping is some people watch us on YouTube, but a lot of people listen. Yes. So do you think and I know you can. Do you think you could walk us through a tapping sequence and one at a time and tell us where to tap and how to tap? I know the magic is in our fingertips. Yeah. And then why we would tap there. I'm going to turn it over to you. Give us the first place you want to start for tapping. Yeah. So, um, Usually, I mean, I can outline the steps. Usually you would just identify that there's some issue going on inside your body or your thoughts or something that is circling. And so you want to identify and just choose one. Um, and that would be, you know, the very first step is saying, so an example of that might be, um, I could just say, um, hey, you know, I noticed that I'm having a little bit of nervousness or anxiety coming on this podcast with, with Angie today. And so that would be an example or you could notice, wow, I'm really um, craving potato chips. And, you know, do I really want those potato chips? I mean, there can be so many. So you just identify one issue. That's how you start. And um, then you just test the intensity of that. So if I were to do that on a scale of one to 10, it's usually or zero to 10, really like where is that for me? So if I just use the example of, mm, I feel a little nervous, I want to do a good job for Angie and her audience today. Um, I might think, you know, uh, 10 might be the highest and zero would be the lowest. I'm probably about a two in that, you know, arena. And so I would just kind of check in before I start and notice where I feel it in my body too. If I'm feeling nervous, okay, well, I feel it maybe a little bit in my chest. So you want to identify where in your physical body you feel it. Um, and then uh, how, how big is it? So it's not too big for me. Um, of course, I want to do well for your audience, but it's not terrible. But some people can be at a 10 or they can really be in a panic or a stress or have some, it could be grief. It could be any emotion you can imagine. You want, want to identify it and you want to notice where you feel it in your body. Um, and so then if you're going through the entire sequence, you want to uh, acknowledge the issue. And a lot of times we'll just think, oh, it's really inconvenient. I don't want to feel that inside my body. Oh, I don't want to be nervous. I want to show up and be confident, right? If we're just using my example again. Um, and so, you know, I might go through and recognize, okay, well, I feel a little bit of nervousness in my chest, maybe in my heart center here. Okay. And instead of shaming that, right, or judging that part of me that is, is really giving me information about, oh, it's important that I, you know, meet Angie and I do a great job for her and her audience. Instead of shaming that and thinking, oh, I just want this to go away. It's so inconvenient. What we really want to do is uh, welcome that feeling in, acknowledge it fully and accept the problem is there and that's how we can shift it. So again, if we start on my scale of, of, you know, a two and my nervousness that's living in my chest, a statement that, um, the, uh, EFT has, uh, come up with in order to acknowledge that is, um, a really basic one is even though I have this feeling of nervousness inside my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. So that's kind of like your baseline and it's at a level two. And so I know, and so then we're going to begin our tapping um, and go through the sequence. Do you have a question? 
I do. So mm -hmm. I want to stay with that for a minute. I love that one. And I love that you chose nervousness because I feel like mm -hmm. that's an, that's a daily emotion for so many situations. Yeah. And so, and I also think that for a lot of us, we carry our emotions in different places. Like mm -hmm. For me as a woman, I, I feel like it's always in my gut, right? Mm -hmm. Or I get a headache. Those are my two big ones. I'm either feeling it in my gut or I'm feeling it in my head or both. And I love, I can't remember your exact phrase, but basically I know that I feel this nervousness, mm -hmm. a two, whatever it might be in my stomach and I'm going to embrace it. And I know that wasn't the exact phrase, yeah. but basically it's a way of saying, I'm not going to do what I want to do, which is to pretend like it isn't there. Right. Because I have talked a lot about suppression on my podcast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how we want to suppress because we don't want to feel. None of us wants to be uncomfortable, but mm -hmm. we all are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the evidence supports that it's more uncomfortable to suppress Correct. than to feel. So yeah. Casey, I want to reintroduce you real quick. And then I know you're going to start getting into the tapping and I'm personally very excited. So yeah. this is Casey Stevens and she's a licensed psychotherapist. She also does hypnotherapy and she's a consciousness coach. She's going to teach us how to tap our way from anxiety and stress. Okay. So Casey, I'm turning it back over to you. Sure, sure. So the statement again, um, so people, uh, and you can do any variation. It's just as long as you're making some accepting statement, you're identifying what the feeling is insofar as you can identify it because it can also move and change as you go through. Um, so even though I have this uh, nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. You could also say I deeply and completely love myself, whatever feels most resonant with you. Um, that's sort of like the basic statement that you can keep applying and tapping through. So then the sequence um, begins uh, with a karate chop. So if you imagine uh, the both of the outsides of your hands, and if you were to karate chop something in front of you, you want to actually take those two sides of your hands and just bump them together. Um, and this actually is the meridian point that uh, connects to the small intestine. So then you just start as you're saying your initial statement, even though I have this nervousness in um, this part of my body and my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. And so then you're just tapping as you set that up. And that's accessing those meridian points, which is the small intestine, and it also connects to agitation. Um, and so then the next one, if you take your fingers and you just kind of cup them and for the very first one, you only need one hand, although you could use both of them. And then you just go up to the very top of your head, the crown and the center. If you imagine just, uh, you know, if a string were going all the way up into, um, the ceiling above you and you just want to tap with your fingers lightly, gently. It doesn't have to be hard. It can be whatever. It's just accessing that point a little bit. And the top of the head is the governing vessel, um, which can work with depression or any kind of mental um, uh, difficulties, stress that are going on. Um, and so then we would just tap uh, on the top of the head. And every time you move, you just kind of keep talking and you might say a phrase or a couple of words. Um, and so I might say, even though I have just tapping the top of my head, even though I have this nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now, the next point is going to bring you down. Um, Can I stop you real quick, Casey, before we move on? So yeah. is there a magic number of taps or is it just mm -hmm. until I start to feel more settled? Yeah. I mean, you could do five, seven, 10, whatever you want to. It honestly, like you're just, um, you're just activating that meridian point that connects to, um, and, and any of these that you notice that I do down the, the, um, middle line, like the midline of the body, what they're great about in the top of the head is one of these, what they're great about is that they are going to connect several different, um, organs and emotional centers in the body. So the head does that and you can literally just, you know, it's, I, I don't count necessarily because it's more important what you're saying and how you're feeling and what you're releasing as you tap. Um, and so, so I would say it's roughly five to seven times. Okay. And mm -hmm. for those who are listening, mm -hmm. I also want to kind of clarify because I can see you. Mm -hmm. And on the first one, when you mentioned the karate chop, I would have thought to go kind of diagonally with my hands. But just for those of you who are listening, Casey had like pinky to pinky, outside mm -hmm. palm to outside palm, and you were tapping this way, almost like palms lifted. And right. um, just to kind of clarify that. And then the tapping of the head was, but I also like the way that you repeat the phrase as you're doing it. So mm -hmm. it's as much of 
a, a verbal articulation as it is a physical application. <laughs> yeah. And to your point, you made a really great point earlier, Angie, about that. We can use the language around this and identify something specific. But if you're having a hard time accessing what you're feeling, you're just feeling overwhelmed or stressed in some way, and you don't want to go through all of this, any of these points, you can just tap through and you will have a similar impact. It just is nice, you know, kind of intellectually, psychologically to pair it with the words and the body. But if you can't do that, and if it's just simpler for you to tap, um, it could even be if you have a child that you see as stressed or a partner or someone that you love, somebody that's sick, an ailing parent, somebody in the hospital, any of those things, you can literally go through and just tap these points on their body, right, for them to help them reduce their stress or teach them how to do it themselves, right? But it's just a really like the tapping itself, because it touches on these acupressure points, uh, makes a difference. It's going to soften any of that that you're experiencing, whether you're consciously, you know, combining it with um, the language or not. Well, I, I, I got a smile on my face because I, I had a devious thought for a moment where I thought, oh, so the next time my spouse is feeling a little heightened, I'm just going to go up and tap his head and I wonder how that would go over. But anyway, okay. So um, it would probably have a calming effect, really. I mean, I have done it many times. I did it when my grandma was in the hospital and she just, you know, didn't really have the mobility. I've done it for lots of, I've done certainly done it for my partner as well, right? Just like moving through through uh, the body. And, and if you can sense, it's just, you don't even have to go through the whole sequence, but any of these points are, are really wonderful just for providing this like physical uh, support is, is really a beautiful gift that we can give to people in addition to ourselves. I think so too. Yeah, try, try it with your husband. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've done, you know, we've done the karate chop. We've yep. done the tapping of the head. What would be another one? Mm -hmm. So then the next point is the um, right over the eyebrows. So if you imagine kind of like the arch, the natural arch of your eyebrows, if you just take two fingers and I usually take my um, my pointer finger and then my middle finger on both hands. And then I would just tap right above that arch on my forehead, right above the arch of my eyebrow. Um, and again, you can just keep going through, even though I have this nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. And you can change just for simplicity purposes. You can keep kind of evolving as you move through the different points. But if you just kind of want to master this initial statement and this initial emotion and where it is in the body, then just saying the same thing over and over, you could just tap until tap kind of gently until you reach that first one. And so this, um, this point above the eyebrows that we just practiced uh, is the bladder meridian and that deals with shock typically. So again, what's really beautiful is all of these points kind of uh, move through like a comprehensive, um, you know, neg the negative emotions that we might be storing in our body. And so we're probably reducing lots of things, even if, you know, the nervousness that I feel in my chest um, isn't specifically touched on, it's like there's this through line that connects all the meridians and the acupuncture, acupuncture points. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's the next one. Then the next one is kind of on the sides of the eyes and your temples. If you imagine just at the base of your eyebrows and you just, again, tap through that, even though I have this nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself and just tap that, um, as long as you like. And that, um, that is the gallbladder meridian and the gallbladder usually holds resentment or frustration. And so um, tapping through the sides of the eyes, just as long as you want. And it just, it's, again, it's just such a light tap that it should just feel really gentle and soft. And, but you definitely can feel the presence of your fingers as you touch. Um, and so then the next one is underneath the eye. So if you imagine kind of like this little ridge that we have, the eye socket that we hold, um, our eyes in just kind of on that ridge right there, uh, just beneath the eyeballs. And then you tap that one and you can go through again, even though I have this nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. Um, and well, just Go ahead. And I noticed when you did the temples, it looked like you did two fingers again. You did yeah. the first two fingers. You can use one. You can use one. It's really what some people will use even four fingers. You know, it's just really whatever is comfortable for you. Sometimes yeah. I like using two because if you're not exactly right on the spot, it doesn't have to be exact, right? To your point about the karate chopping, you can actually go at an angle. It just matters that you get one of your hands. But I always kind of do them like this because, you know, along the whole sides of all the fingers on both sides because it's getting both the hands but really it's it's not um 
like the more fingers you use, the more coverage that you're going to get uh, if you want to. And you're just more likely if you're using two fingers to get that area, the whole area, the right area that has that, that holds that acupressure point. So, okay. um, and, and this under the eye point um, is the stomach meridian. And so that usually holds any fatigue or tiredness that we have, any lethargy um, in our body. That's kind of what the, the stomach can hold. So um, the next one is uh, right underneath the nose. So kind of between your lip and your nose in the center. And this is, again, a um, midpoint. Uh, and so what that does is... Um, it is the governing, it's called the governing vessel in Chinese medicine. And what the governing vessel um, also then is going to incorporate more, any of these midline points that I mentioned earlier is they're going to hold more of the organs. Um, there's going to be more through lines that connect them all. And so um, this is an important one, right? Because again, this is like mind and thoughts um, as well as it connects the heart and so many other ones. So again, you can go through your sequence, even though I have this nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. Um, so they're just tapping there as, as through your whole sequence. And again, you can use one finger if you like. The next point is just underneath. It's on the chin between the lip and the bottom of the chin, just kind of also a midline point. Um, and that's the central vessel. And so even though I have this uh, nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. The next one, um, you're going to take your hands and separate them and you're going to move down to the collarbone. And there's kind of like this notch underneath your um, uh uh, collarbone here. And you just kind of want to be right on that ridge, that bone, um, and tapping through again. Uh, there you go. Even though I have this nervousness in my chest, I deeply and completely accept myself. And this is the kidney meridian and the kidney meridian holds fear. And okay. so, yeah, just tapping through that. Go ahead. Do you have a question? No, no. I was going to kind of do a quick review because you're so good at this. So we started with the karate chop yep. with the outside of the hands together. Mm -hmm. We went to the top of the head mm -hmm. and then I believe we went above the eyebrows. Above we the eyebrows. To, Temples. We went, yeah. And then we went under the eyes, mm -hmm. we went under the nose, mm -hmm. under the chin, Mm -hmm. And then right oh, yeah. here, right under the collarbones. So we basically go top down, but in a physical approach versus um, what they call a top down approach as far as like being able to articulate through our thoughts. So mm -hmm. I like that. I like that it's kind of easy to remember. It's not a hard, fast, you have to do it this way, this many taps. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you think would be a good place to tap or a simple tapping technique, um, another meridian point, or do we kind of cover the basics? Yeah, there's one final meridian. And, and again, you can do these in any order. Um, another interesting thing, I don't know if you'll notice this when you're in session with people, Angie, but um, I'll notice like somebody might have their hand down uh, on their head, holding their forehead up. There's just different ways that we can, or we might just be at dinner with somebody and we notice that they're touching their face or they're touching their body in some way. It's a really intuitive way that we're connecting with these points. So the final point in the sequence is under the arm. So if you imagine um, kind of lifting your arm and then uh, if it were on a woman, it's kind of like if you were to go down in the side of um, where your bra line would be, um, this is kind of the under the arm final point that you do. And this is the spleen meridian and it connects to the emotion of worry. So again, you can just do one side because you would probably lift up one of your arms and then take the other one and wrap it around your chest and then tap under the opposite um, arm right there on kind of like the bra line um, of a woman again. And so just tap that and you can go through and say your sequence again. And again, that's going to get the spleen meridian and access any worry that you're having, which is important because again, if that is kind of where uh, for me today with the statement that I've been using as an example, um, worry is going to be held there. So this is probably going to be the most effective point in this particular sequence. Um, and then you just kind of go back up and you can tap. Um, and again, you can say the statements as you do them or you can just tap. Um, and I could just, uh, as an example, with this worry meridian on my, um, an, on my uh, uh, side uh, under my arm, um, I could just go through and tap that one if that were the thing. It does kind of help to do the whole thing. It's going to reduce everything faster if you do the entire sequence. But if I notice that really what I've been feeling is this 
you know, worry or nervousness in my chest, then that's going to most um, correlate with, with the spleen meridian and the worry, which is right there under the arm. And so then after that's done, you just kind of take a deep breath and you could even close your eyes and reset. And I could just tune in and say, okay, so how is that nervousness in my chest feeling right now? And oftentimes what will happen is you'll feel that it's reduced. So on a scale of zero to 10, where is it? Hmm. To me, it feels like it's probably at a one or a zero right now, right? So it's kind of a nice way to quantify um, and understand, like we can physically feel the reduction. Now, had I started at a higher number with a bigger stress, then those numbers would probably reduce. And what I would say then, and it might even shift. So maybe it's not worry, but now it's um, something else if there were still a number that were activated there. And so then I would just identify, okay, well, what am I feeling right now? Um, and where am I feeling it? Is it still in my chest? Is it still worry? Do I wanna go through the entire sequence again um, and do the whole thing just as I did it before to see if I can get to a true zero zero or um, has it moved right if you start off and you're feeling panicky let's say uh, and then you do the sequence and maybe I started at a seven and now I'm at a five after doing the sequence tapping through one time, I might notice, okay, well, am I still panicky or have I dropped to a deeper level um, of emotion that I'm aware of now and now I can work on that. So it might be while I'm feeling, um, I'm, I'm feeling this pain in my head. It could be a physical pain, like a headache, like you mentioned. And so I would say, okay, well, I have this headache and it's probably about a five. And so then I would go through and I would do the same sequence again, and I could do it again with or without the statements, but the statements always help just because it makes it a little stronger. And so I would say, even though I have this, this, um, and I would just start at the top again, and I would go through all of the points, um, even though I have this headache in my head right now, um, I deeply and completely accept myself. And then I would just move through all of the points again, and then I would retest at the bottom and see, okay, where, where is that headache now? Usually it would be reduced. And then, you know, you move forward. Well, and usually, I, oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was just going to say you want to keep going until it's it's, you know, a um, level that is not really causing you too much distress or stress or physical pain or whatever. Um, and if, ideally, if you can get it to go to zero, then and you have the time to keep tapping through, it really won't take you that long to do all of this. So, Casey, I think this is fascinating. And I think what I even love more about it is that as fitness and wellness and health coaches, all of us are uh, in the spirit of treating the mind and the body and with a bend toward what can the body do to make us feel better. And so what I love about tapping is there is that physical application. It isn't just an emotional application. And so even a trainer could teach themselves how to tap and then teach it to their clients and not feel like they're getting out of their lane. Because to your point, tapping is something that all of us can apply and we can easily learn these techniques and check in with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I find it quite fascinating. And I love that you bridge that mind and body and bring all these applications in. So Casey Stevens, I really appreciate you coming on today and sharing what you know about tapping. I know you are, um, you know, you're into consciousness coaching and energy, and I love that you bridge all those entities. Is there anything else you want to say about tapping before we close up? No, I just hope people will um, give it a try. You know, it really is if you give it a you know, if you're feeling something, you have nothing to lose by doing the sequence. And if you could reduce uh, your state and show up more grounded and balanced and centered and ready to go, then how wonderful would that be? And, um, and I think, you know, you'll notice, right, especially when you test with the scale, you'll notice that there's going to be a reduction in those symptoms. And again, all of these emotions, right, the psychology of what we're experiencing, we store it in the body. And so integrating a way that can incorporate those somatically for us and shift our nervous system, it, you know, is a beautiful thing to do. I agree. And, you know, like you said, there's nothing to lose. What can you lose by gently touching your body and saying a statement that can help regulate your nervous system? So thank you, Casey, for coming on. And thank you for the work that you do. Thank you to all of our app and NASM listeners and to all of you out there who are listening, who just want to feel better from the inside out. Again, my name is Angie Miller. This is Strong Mind, Strong Body, and I hope to see you next week. Mm -hmm.